Hi, I'm Brendan, founder and CEO of Concrete Sensors for today's edition of What's in Your Concrete? So today I'd like to talk about thermal control plants and I'm going to go over why it's needed, when it's needed, and what's typically included in them. So let's start with the why. So we know that concrete is susceptible to temperature. So for example, when it's cold outside, concrete's going to cure slower. When it's hot outside, concrete's going to cure faster. Well, temperature changes can also have, have another effect on concrete. It can increase the risk of shrinking and cracking of concrete. And there's two ways that that can happen. So the first is in extreme temperature environments, when it's really cold outside or really hot outside. The second way that that can happen is when there is a large temperature differential between the center of the concrete and the surface of the concrete. So there are uh, a few, there's typically allowable differences um, that the engineer will set out at the beginning of a project, but it's really dependent on the mix design and the actual temperatures that the concrete's experiencing. And that's, those temperatures are typically either the ambient temperature and the, and the temperature of the concrete itself. All right, so let's talk about when it's needed. Well, there's three scenarios that are typical when a, a thermal control plan can be helpful. The first is mass concrete. So mass concrete, of course, is a really thick pour of concrete. Picture a swimming pool's worth of concrete. The second is cold weather. So if it gets very cold outside, how do we manage the concrete curing to make sure it cures appropriately? And the third is hot weather. Similarly, if, it's, if it gets too hot, how do we make sure that the concrete doesn't get, say, above 160 degrees Fahrenheit? So what's typically included in a thermal control plan? Well, the first is, is a mix design. Sometimes an engineer or, or a consultant will say, hey, make sure that, that there's less or more amount of some, some material. The second is, is the duration that you need to be monitoring the concrete. So how long do you need to be paying attention uh, for, the, for the curing period? Third may be the protection. So, um, you know, what do you need to do to protect the concrete while it's curing? And associated with that, how do you protect it? So, um, the fourth is then monitoring, which of course is where we come in. But monitoring is, is an important piece. So, what is actually happening to the, the concrete? If something's going wrong, what, do you, what can you do to fix it? And associated with that in the th thermal control plan, sometimes is included is a troubleshooting section. So, if something does go wrong, what can you do to make things better? So we feel we, of course, do monitoring very well, and, and we feel we can play an integral role in your thermal control plan. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to talk to you. And so that's it for today's edition of What's in Your Concrete.